The North Dakota Farms, Farmers Union, or NDFU, is raising concerns over Bill SB 2351, which would open up the state's corporate farming law to allow non-family corporations to own land and operate dairy or swine facilities. Senator Terry Wanzik of Jamestown says the bill will keep land in the hands of family farmers by including a 640-acre cap for corporate dairy and swine production. But NDFU General Counsel Chris Schlosser Carlson says the current language of the bill would actually allow a corporation or LLC existing for any purpose, including raising crops or other livestock, to own land as long as it also operates a dairy or swine facility. Carlson says while the bill would limit dairy or swine facilities to 640 acres, there is no limit on the amount of acres a corporation could own for any other purpose, adding that there is no language in the bill stopping a corporation from establishing a subsidiary or many subsidiaries, each owning a 640-acre dairy or swine facility. Time now for Technology Tuesday, brought to you by Total Ag Industries of Hillsboro. There is keen interest in the next level of technology that will help precision agriculture get even more precise. The question is, what do you call them? Some say unmanned aerial vehicles, others simply drones. Valley News Live Farm Director Mick Care answers, gets an answer to that question. Is it UAS or drones? Neither one. It's robotic aircraft. Robotic aircraft. That's okay. right. Very yeah. so, uh, why is it robotic aircraft instead of drones? Well, you know, drones has quite a kind of a bad connotation in a lot of people's mind because it's used in military uh, works. And typically, a drone, like a drone bee, he does his job and he he goes away. Yeah. It doesn't come home. Uh, or a UAV on the other side of it, is, it typically goes on a, a long cross-country mission, does its thing, and returns home. Ours is neither. You, you, you launch it from where you stand, you all can always see it, and it always comes home. So we call it a robot, robotic aircraft. Describe that system. Well, it's a complete package for the farmer or agronomist, everything that they need to fly their fields. And we do use a fixed wing as opposed to a helicopter type. And the reason we use a fixed wing is because it can cover a lot more ground uh, more efficiently in a shorter amount of time. Our, our wing travels at 40 miles an hour, and it can cover two to 300 acres in 30 minutes. Yet, are, are there advantages that a quadcopter might have over your system? Sure, like a helicopter, a quadcopter can hover. Uh, a flying wing cannot uh, hover unless you fly it in uh, Kansas, where we have 40 mile an hour winds. But uh, uh, that's another advantage of uh, the flying wing. And that's the thing a lot of folks uh, forget or they don't realize in this technology. When they can get the highest value of it out of this technology is in the spring. And when that's when the winds are blowing the hardest. And the local dealer for Ag Eagle is Agassiz Drain and Tile. Well, all farmers hope to farm year after year and even pass the family farm down to the next generation. Now, all farmers grow food, but... In the distant future, what will farms be like and what will they be tasked to do? Reporter Drew Reynolds takes you now to the country's largest indoor commercial vertical farm. Do not be confused by the drab facade of the warehouse in this northwest Indiana industrial park. It's a farm and it could well be the future. You'll find arugula and parsley, basil, kale and other greens that grace our plates. We grow nine varieties of lettuces. So you're Mr. Salad. <laughs> I'll take that. I can be called worse. Here's some cilantro. He's actually yeah, called Robert Colangelo, the founder of Green Sense Farms, and this is how he does it. The light emitting diode, or LED. It gives you a very concentrated amount of light. It burns much cooler, and it's much more energy efficient. No sun, no problem. Researchers believe plants respond best to the blue and red colors of the spectrum. So the densely packed plants are bathed in a pink and purple haze, moistened by recycled water, bolstered by nutrients, and anchored in a special mix of ground Sri Lankan coconut husks. So you can grow plants inside. So what? Well, we take weather out of the equation. We can grow year-round and we can harvest year-round. That means that the snowbound Midwest consumer doesn't always have to look to California for lettuce in the winter or any other time. They can get Colangelo's produce at the local grocery at a consistent price. This Thai basil is amazing. Scott Hinkle, a local it's chef, says the sunless harvest time, yeah. 
yeah, tastes great. It, Watercress or micro arugula or kale, uh, our blossom salad that we do every week. With less water and fertilizer, fewer workers and no gasoline, it's more economical to grow greens this way than on the traditional farm. No bugs here, so no pesticides. No weeds, so no herbicides. And Colangelo really knows his plants. Do you think plants have feelings? <laughs> we do play them classical music just in case they do. Do you? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Is there a composer that they prefer? <laughs> they haven't told us yet. <laughs> if it's Metallica, I don't want to eat it. And as to whether he's cheating nature... We're making nature better. So let the music play. All right, coming up right after the break, we'll take a full look at your weather forecast.